As with everything else, the first thing you do when you're inspecting an area is you just look at the area. So I'm looking for any signs of inflammation that may indicate um, some sort of disorder of the lung or any sort of um, deviation and for obviously symmetry and things like that to ensure that there's no issues. I'm also looking for moles and things like that to evaluate, um, see if there's any sorts of skin cancer or anything like that. I'm also going to look at her from the front and I'm going to ask that you pull your robe down, or not your robe, your gown down, excuse me a little bit. And um, I'm looking in the front as well, looking at her face, looking for cyanosis of the lips, um, any clubbing of her fingernails, I don't see any. Um, looking at her trachea for any tracheal deviation that could be um, related to atelectasis, a pneumothorax, anything like that, and I see nothing. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate her um, dimension. So I'm going to place one hand on your chest and one hand on your back, and I'm going to have you take a deep breath in and out. And her A to P chest dimension um, seemed normal on both sides, and it seemed to be adequate filling. So then I'm going to have her rotate, place my hands palm side down on her back, and have her breathe in and out. And there should be two and a half inches of motion there. Um, and that's for lateral chest expansion to ensure that the lungs are doing proper filling as well. So after I've inspected the front and the back, you can pull your gown up if you'd like, or you can leave it down. Um, I'm going to have her cross her arms in the front and lean forward. And I am going to percuss in between the rib angles, or not the rib angles, in between the ribs. And I'm trying to get a resonancy, um, which would be because the lung is an air-filled structure. Um, and any hypo or hyper resonance may be indicative of specific diseases. All right, so now that we finished with that, I'm going to move in and I'm going to do some um, looking for vibration. So I'm going to have you say 99. 99. Again. 99. Good job. One more time. And then from the side, you're going in like this so that you can feel 99. Um, her side lungs. So after that, you are going to begin with um, your listening portion of your exam. So I'm just going to have you breathe in and out. Um, a little bit of a deeper breath than normal in and out of your mouth every time I put the um, stethoscope down. I'm going to come around and do it on the front and I'm going to turn around the stethoscope so I can do this top part and then turn it back around for the front evaluation. And I would continue down um, in the same fashion, but for the sake of the video and the time, I'm not going to continue to do that. Now I'm going to have you cross your arms like before and bow your head again. And I'm going to have you say toy boat every time I put the stethoscope down. Toy boat. Toy boat. Toy boat. Toy boat. Toy boat. Toy boat. Good. So everything was heard like it was supposed to. There's not any hyper or hypo resonance in there that would cause me to hear things louder than I should. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have you um, 
say the word, say the letter E. 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 And I'm looking for the letter E specifically. If it turns into an A, that is an issue. And then the last test we're going to do is we're going to do um, a whispered petroliquy test. So I'm going to have you whisper um, 99. And with that, you shouldn't hear anything too loudly. Oh, you may pull your gown up as well if you would like. Um, with that, you shouldn't hear anything um, too clearly because if you hear it clearly, then there could be a mass in the lung or something of that sort. Um, you're also looking for any signs of disease, which I didn't really see with her. One side was a little, um, a little bit of a different noise than the other, and then she told me she had asthma before we did the video, so that explains why, um, or athletically induced asthma, so that explains why there could be a discrepancy between the two lungs.